After verifying that everything is okay with the show command, we can go ahead and save our user. For now, we're gonna go ahead and exit and talk about it a little bit. So we've created our user um, and uh, we've given, given him an identity and we can verify that identity is actually there. Um, Jerry Silva with everything I did. However, we need to also give the user a role. So we can use the same AD edit and bind to the domain and uh, use a package. Um, we have a, a library called ADE, so package. Gives us a lot, of, a lot of utilities to do routinary things in Active Directory, like adding a user to a group. So add And uh, we're going to add uh, Jeremy Silva. And let's verify what's the uh, UPN of the group that uh, he should belong to. Let's go to roles. And it's called Unix Database Server Users. We can copy that so we can make it more accurate. At That's it. So now we've given the user um, both an identity and a group membership that um, using AD Edit. So how do we verify that everything is working the way it's supposed to? Uh, very simple. Uh, we need to make sure A, that people have the rights that they need and the roles that they need. I'm gonna go ahead here and quickly run the AD flush command. And since um, since we're in Unix, let's do a verification in Unix. So um, many of you probably have already read the posting about cache. So the AD flush command should be familiar to you. So I could use the AD query command. AD query users should show me all the users that can log into the system. Notice that um, both uh, Jesse. Uh, as well as uh, Jeremy and Ra Raymond can log in. But if you want to take a look at what uh, Jesse can do, I can use the um, DZ info command. Uh, and this should show me what he can do. And in here, notice that, uh, let's just make this bigger. He can, uh, he's a Unix sysadmin and can effectively run any command as root. Let's take a look at uh, Jeremy. He's a little bit different. He's a regular user and has no privileged commands and can only log in through, through SSH. Same thing for, uh, for Raymond. That's the way to verify that in Unix. Um, um, we can actually also make sure that who can log in in um, uh, maybe my SUSE system that is not a database system. So let's go ahead and uh, um, go to my SUSE system. And this, um, just to make sure, since we made some changes. Uh, and this will be right. Notice that only Jesse can log into uh, the SUSE machine. And this is because we only provision the database users, right? So we are basically making sure that the least access principle is being enforced. Super users can log into all systems but they, DBAs can only log into DBA systems, in this case, my CentOS 1 computer. We could also do this from Access Manager. I can go to the zone and look at the show effective user rights, pick the computer. For example, my CentOS computer shows all the users. And that this can be done um, 
that's being granted at the database server's level. But if I click at uh, Jesse, it was granted at the zones level. If I go to my Solaris box, Jesse is the only person who has access as well as my SUSE system. So we've provisioned our super user, two DBAs, we've used IADOC, we've used Access Manager, we've used AD Edit, and we've verified both in the Unix side and in the Windows side that they only have access to the systems that they should be able to log into. Now that we have Unix enabled our users, let's go ahead and test with Jesse and see some of the things that happen when you migrate a user in an existing system. Let me go ahead and connect to CentOS 1. At this point, I'll be using Jesse's Active Directory password. Notice this, it says an account with a conflicting name already exists locally and it's also enabled to change directories to the home for J Matthews. The reason is pretty simple. It's all due to NSS and a conflict of UAD GADs. So let's do a verification through NSS. If, if I do a get tent for password and grep for J Matthews, you will see that there's two entries, one with this long UID and another with a 503 UID, which I can confirm that is from the local T password file. So this is J Matthews' local account in the Unix computer. The other problem has to do with file and folder ownership. If I um, list the um, the contents of the home directory and let's say it would be J okay um, notice that um, UID 503 J Matthews owns that folder so the user is unable to do uh, to change to that folder there's many ways that it can be solved with Centrify. We could do an account override. We could use the, the, AID, the AD fix ID command. So there's many ways to solve this with the problem with the software, but this all requires a little bit of planning. So this is going to be the topic of the next, next uh, a couple of postings on the blog. So um, keep, uh, keep tuned and um, uh, we'll talk later.